Hey guys, and welcome to my Get Up Started Quick Guide to the Cinder Drift Extreme, where you're going to be battling the Ruby Weapon. This is going to be a guide where I will be trimming the fat and won't bog you down with unnecessary mechanics or concerns that really no one's doing. So my goal will be to show you the current ways that pugs and party finder groups are clearing. I kind of held off on making this guide for a while because I wanted to clear it enough times to honestly actually know what I was talking about and what party finder is actually doing before making a guide. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to do whenever you're going to enter any of these parties is that you should have a marker placed near the middle of the party and everyone is going to be assigned one of the positions around the clock. You have a total of eight different points around a circle with the boss in the center and you have what's called cardinals which is north, south, east, west and then you have intercardinals called northeast, south, east, etc. just in between all of them. Reality is Party Finder at the current point of time isn't really distinguishing between where range or anything else is going. The only real thing is that they try and keep one healer on the east side and one healer on the west side. And that's going to be relevant for stack markers coming up next. So what you need to do at this point is that someone should lay down markers for all eight of those positions. Whichever corner or spot you're in around that initial placed square. Make sure that you remember that letter that is going to be important and remember it through this entire fight. Next up, they are going to be placing probably a 1 and a 2 marker, or it might be an A and a B. Either way, it's going to be a marker set to distinguish whether you're going to stack on the east or on the west side, or left or right of the boss when the stack mechanic comes. Just get into groups of 4, and that should be great. Generally speaking, aside from direct north and direct south, you should probably just be fitting in on whatever side you're already on. Because if you're already east, you're probably going to stack east. If you're already west, probably west. The first mechanic that the boss is going to do is called Optimized Ultima, and it's just a large raid-wide AoE. Generally speaking, if you're ranged DPS, you could use your shield here. Uh, tanks should be using their mitigation tools as well, and healers brace for impact. But reality is, this doesn't hit so hard that it could wipe the party without barriers, but be ready for it. Next up, you're going to see a bunch of lines appear on the ground, and that's going to be all that's going to be on the ground. Just dodge these accordingly, but be ready for the next phase, which actually does involve a little bit of work. The boss is going to cast an ability called Helio Claw, and this is going to put AoEs around the boss. And what you're going to do is you're going to try and stand in between the intersection between two of these circles. It doesn't honestly matter where. Party Finder, it really doesn't matter. And then, as soon as you see lines appear, move to the left. You might have some lines crisscrossing over it, but that's okay, just adjust. But as long as you're a little bit to the left, I can't really say exactly how much I go left, but as you can see in the video, clearly it's just a little bit to the left and I dodge no problem. In general, you're just trying to get away from that line, but again, I'm not trying to explain all these mechanics in such super depth to you. Just move to the left. And that's going to repeat once more for a total of two times and then after that you're just gonna get a bunch of lines on the ground again just dodge accordingly honestly after this point i usually just get near my marker because upcoming is a mechanic that places a bunch of lines on the ground there's going to be a short line and then a long line and the pattern around the boss goes that for cardinals and intercards it can either be a long or a short line there are going to be safe spots very close to the boss but not right on the boss where there is a pocket of safe zone and then for the short ones the safe zone pocket is actually super far away near against the wall as you can see me standing in this video now at this part there can be one of two mechanics and we will get to the other one later in the video when I can actually show you but for this part it's called undermine and so for this part you do not want to be standing on top of any of these cracks that you see on the ground whether it be long whether it be short stay away from them and you are going to be getting a set of three different markers on yourself that place at your location so you're going to place one down move a little bit place the next one move a little bit and likewise again place it and move a little bit and then you're done for this one try and make sure that you stack them away from anyone else and yeah generally speaking you should be good for this phase and honestly it's really easy to dodge these in this particular phase the other one's a little harder so just stay out of them just place them down and keep hitting the boss 
near the end of this, as the marks are just starting to disappear, the boss will cast an ability called Ruby Ray. Just move to the sides or behind the boss. It's a really easy mechanic to dodge. At this point, you should actually see a bunch of orange circles appear around the battlefield, and this actually indicates that the boss is actually going to be using Liquefaction. And for the record, Liquefaction always follows the set order that you're going to see it in. And so for this first one, the boss is going to make the center of the arena safe and the rest of it very dangerous sand. Do not step in it, whatever you do and then there are going to be a bunch of arrows pointed everywhere. I'm telling you, ignore all of the other arrows, just look at the current arrow. That's all I'm saying to do. And then move to the diagonal on that circle, away from that arrow, so the opposite direction that the arrow's pointing, and down. And this is going to prevent you from being clipped. Be very tight to the edge because this is a very tight mechanic. From here, the boss is going to do his dashes three times, and then he is going to be like kind of floating on one side of the battlefield. Look at this point, turn your camera directly to the boss, and then you're going to see him with just this giant purple ominous claw looking thing. You're going to want to go to the opposite side of him right now. And this mechanic is one that I think trips up a lot of people, but once I explain it to you, it's going to make a lot of sense. So envision where he is right now. So right now, you see that I want to stay on the left side of this platform, right? Okay, now watch as I have turned my camera, and now I'm looking, and the arrow pointing inwards, which means that he's going to come through this field, and ignore the other arrows, but look at the in one inwards. Now you want to go to the left of that one. So basically all you've done at this point is you've kind of looked at his current position, now you're looking at the other position, and you're just applying the same formula. Left, stay left. Because of the claw, the claw is always going to be on his, his left, which is your right. So you want to go to your left to avoid it. And just stick to that. From here, he's just going to do more um, of those optimized ultimas. Just prepare as you would for the first. But another one is that he is going to use a stomp tank buster. Healers just prepare for that and then prepare for a tank swap at this point. And yeah, tanks just will get a nasty debuff, so try and swap it if you can. Next mechanic is called Ruby Dynamics, and then he will just float to one side of the battlefield with both claws showing. And then this is where your stack markers that you were assigned initially are really important. Go onto either the left or the right, whichever one you were assigned, and try and pop mitigation. Mitigation actually is super important here. If you are a ranged DPS like me on Machinist, use, or me on Dancer actually for this clip, wrong clip, you, I'm going to use Shield Samba here, and that's because there is so much burst damage going out here, it really makes a huge difference. So immediately after the stack marker goes off, you go to either the left or the right side of the field, and four should be on each side. If there's a fifth, then someone is screwing up and they should honestly stick to their stack marker group. And so if you're on the left marker, go to the left side of the arena, because he is going to do a cleave through the center of it, and he will hit anyone there. Just make sure that you don't overlap, but stick close to one another, but don't hit anyone. You can overlap the circles, just don't overlap on top of another person. These circles can stack it. It'll be okay. I know a lot of people in PF, for whatever reason, are phobic of this. The circles can stack. You'll be okay. From here, it is really rinse and repeat of the same mechanics. So he will once again go into the center of the arena eventually after casting a few more ultimas, and then he will bring out those rock cracks through the ground. You're gonna have the long ones and the short ones just the same as before. Again, like before, there's a safe spot near the boss for the long ones and then for the short ones you want to stay super clipped against the wall like right against the wall and you'll be safe now this is the other mechanic that could appear earlier and this one can but it's really random but the way you're going to handle either of those mechanics are the same so instead of getting the under one now you're going to get liquefaction and so instead of staying away from the cracks you're actually going to want to step onto the crack again st I know some pug groups apparently rotate, but you know what, after all of my clears, I'm not getting any rotations for this one. Or, I've had maybe three or so, but rotation doesn't seem to be really a thing in pug groups. But, just go to your marker, 
go to the crack on your marker and then stand on it. And now you're going to have the one, two, three dropping of mechanics and again, avoid stepping in anyone else's. This one, unlike the other one, is going to be very tight and it's very important that you drop them as far back as you can. And remember, the circles can overlap with the circles. That's okay. But do realize that if you step in any of these circles, you will definitely, definitely risk wiping the party. Like if someone drops one of these markers in the center, you're done. You're wiped. But in reality, just stay as far back as you can and just watch even for these ones. Like if you're a little worried with the short ones, watch where all of these DPS are currently placing their markers and just follow that. It, it, it will work out, promised. Also, if you're on a long one and you're kind of like quote unquote trapped back there, it's no big deal. Just place them and yeah. You know, Go on from there but i should say like there is no need to be in the center of the arena if you are quote unquote trapped don't push it it is better to die yourself than to go into the middle and risk wiping everyone and yeah from this point you've really seen basically every mechanic the last thing that he's going to do is that he's going to do another liquefaction but remember the last one was that the inside was safe now it's going to be the outside that's safe and then he's gonna zip to one end of the arena. What I generally see most groups do, as you can see in the footage, is we just kind of like get near him wherever he's flying and then we're just gonna immediately walk into wherever he was. And this tends to really work out well. After that, the outsides are gonna become dangerous through liquefaction and then the center is gonna be safe. And then he's gonna show a claw, just go to the opposite side of the claw and then that mechanic's done. And really, first phase is over. That's all that it is. After a disgusting cutscene that I am not going to be showing on this channel because, uh, you usually in a pug group are gonna wipe. So just run into the wall and die. This allows you to get all of your cooldowns up and you can do a full opener here. I have, I, d I don't think that I've even had a single clear that actually went just forward with the fight. I think we've always ran into a wall. At this point of the fight, she does a lot of casts, and that's one thing I wanted to do with this guide, is ignore these casts. Basically at this point, you want to wail on the boss until she spawns two adds. At this point, you will have a debuff that is either red or blue on yourself. If you have the red debuff, hit the blue. If you have the blue debuff, hit the red one. Just opposite. I mean, if you did Hades, you're, this is basically the same as when you had Igerleon, or however her name is, and then La Habrea. Yeah, the, this, this phase is very similar. Also, one thing that I should say is that generally I tend to stand underneath the ad that I'm currently attacking, and that's because they have two mechanics. The first one is called Iron Chariot, and you're going to want to run away from that ad because it's going to be just be large AoE damage and a knockback around this ad. And then the other one is going to be Lunar something. And basically for that one, you want to actually be standing underneath the boss for that one. So if you're familiar at all with the Chimera fight where they have the lightning cone around themselves or the lightning circle around themselves, and then the close range ice one, it's basically the same thing. So Iron Chariot, get out. The Lunar one, get under. During this time, the party will be attacked by a few AoEs and just try and shield them if you can. Healers, be ready to heal those off. One mechanic that is actually very important to pay attention to is that she will spawn two floating heads. One blue, one red head. And literally what you want to do is you want to have the DPS that it's clipped on to go to the other side of the ad, the opposite ad. So bring the blue head to the red one, red head to the blue head, and then just have them collide. Be aware though that if you have a DPS run into these, it's going to deal very very significant damage to the party which is very bad. another mechanic to watch out for especially for tanks and healers is ruby claw and this is just going to be a tank buster from that so just be wary of that and try and use mitigation as appropriate from this point you are very much in an aoe heavy phase and the basically the boss is going to just call down a bunch of moons and it's just going to make the field flash like this very vibrant red that you can see on the screen right now in general, you're going to expect a lot of healing. Try and use some mitigation here, but reality is you want to save big mitigation like ranged DPS mitigation for the next phase coming up, but we're focused on this one right now. So use light mitigation, healers prepare to heal, but overall this won't wipe you quite as nicely as the next. So one thing to note though is that during this she will have an eye marker on herself, as with all eye markers, just 
turn away and then look back at her. Right after the cast bar is done finished, you should be good. After this point, you are going to enter the meteor phase, and for this one, each player is going to get a number above their head in comets from 1 to 8. And so remember your markers from first phase, exact same markers apply here. So in this instance, D was my marker, marker from the first one. D is still my marker for this one. So likewise, you can see that I'm taking my marker over here. And for markers one through seven, but not eight, you are gonna go all the way to the wall and wait until the marker is off your head and so the meteor is placed and ready. And so stand there until the meteor is placed and then go immediately and like directly under the boss, like square center in the field. But for marker number eight, please make sure that you're about the halfway mark. So you see the boss's circle, and then you see the edge of the arena. Go about halfway from there. If you get too close to the party, you will probably wipe the entire party with how much damage is going out. From here, I do strongly suggest using a lot of mitigation, and healers prepare for a ton of damage. Right before the last meteor drops, the boss is going to cast a ability called Shriek, and then this is going to actually knock the entire party back. And at this point, if you either want to aim yourself to be knocked back behind the 8th meteor or walk behind the 8th meteor and then use knockback prevention is totally your prerogative. And yeah, just make sure that you are not knocked back into the wall, which will kill you. And make sure that by the time that the comet in the middle of the arena, the big, big, big one hits that you are behind this eighth meter now after that phase you are going to be able to hit the boss freely for a bit and then next comes a very important phase especially for tanks and healers is that you want tanks to be following a trail of dots so you're gonna see arrow one two three four and then the tank needs to preferably if they're like a paladin use hollowed ground or summon vulnerability mechanic with lots of cooldowns because these really hurt significantly and healers brace for impact and the tank literally is going to catch a comet and it is very important that the dps focus these comets down as quickly as possible if you are ranged dps you are probably going to be able to hit both of these comets with your limit break this does take a little bit of trial and error with practicing your aim though i'm not gonna lie i have whiffed it myself a few times but whatever you do make sure you get these done fast and then after that it's honestly just a bunch of group raid wide aoe's there's really aside from that nothing truly that was it and so healers brace for impact and likewise use mitigation where appropriate anyhow that is actually all for this video and let me know what you thought about this fight are you excited about it have you cleared it yet are you maybe feeling a bit better on this fight if i'm gonna be super honest i think that this fight would be a really great gateway for newer players to really get into the raiding scene and just get their feet wet i think that this fight is definitely one of the more forgiving fights um especially like say you wipe on the second phase you're not going to get brought back all the way to the first phase so that's actually a huge benefit to players, and I think that the mechanics are more than fair. Anyhow, those are just my thoughts and opinions on this fight, and yeah, let me know what you think down below. And as always, any likes, comments, and subscribes are super appreciated. Anyhow, that's all for this video. Take care. Have a great one.